Watching yourself again? Well, yeah, I'm bored. What else is there to do during this quarantine? When was the last time you checked your dog gear? Oh, yeah. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina and if you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Make sure you click this little subscribe button over here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. Now in today's video, what I'm going to talk about is gear organization and why it's so very important. I'm also going to be giving you a quick little tour of my PSD gear and how I store it in my truck because a lot of you guys know I do a ton of public safety diving and we get call outs constantly, whether it's once a month, once every six months, or even during this quarantine, I've been called out three times for public safety diving. So with that being said, I think talking about gear organization and taking good care of your gear is very important to you because if you take good care of your gear, it'll definitely take good care of you. But a quick tour of what I keep with me for public safety diving. Guys, I use a, an aluminum tank rack. I've actually had this rack for about 10 years now. It come from one of my diving mentors. It'll actually hold six tanks across the top, then I can put two on each side. I've got some medical supplies back there. That's not just for diving. That's also because I'm a first responder here in our local community. You'll notice that the tanks, obviously, I typically only use aluminum 80s, and I've got an aluminum 30 that I use for public safety diving. Of course, I got my dry suit. But one thing that I want you to notice, my BC is actually pre-attached to the tank, and there's a reason that I do that. All of my dive gear gets put into a Pelican style box. It's got wheels. I can drag it. I can take it anywhere I need it. But those tanks tend to be very difficult to carry, especially if you're dragging a box with you. So by having my BC pre-attached, not only does it make it quicker for me in a quick deploy situation, but I can actually just throw the tank on my back and walk with it as I'm dragging my gear. So that's why I do that. Moving over to my box real quick, which is kind of the centerpiece for this video. Um, you guys know I love Pelican boxes, and I know somebody's going to say, but you're a Pelican dealer. Obviously, you're going to love them. Guys, I've had this box for about 25 years. I've only been a Pelican dealer at my company for about six years. So I've been using Pelican way, way, way before I ever become a dealer for them. This happens to be their 1650. It's part of their protector series here. Uh, we also use the Pelican Airs, which are our primary boxes for teaching, especially when we travel as well. And I will be talking about the differences in the two real briefly in this video. But open it up and what I want you to focus on is the organization here. You don't have to organize it the same way I do. But what I do want you to focus on is the fact that it is organized. Now I do use the organizer here by Pelican. Unfortunately, they are not making one yet for their Pelican Air Series. You will have to get a third party or an aftermarket version for it. But I have been told that hopefully here soon they will have an organizer for it. But I've got a ton of different items here. Here that are very easy to get to. Some navigation tools, investigative tools, I've got a spare mask, some defog, all the accessory items that you think you might need I do carry with me. I also carry another waterproof first aid kit. Now our dive shop is also a marina so we've got multiple distributors that we get uh, supplies from so that's where that actually comes from. But if you'll notice in the main body of the box, everything is perfectly organized. So if I jerk my BC and my tank out of the truck, the next thing I need, obviously, is my rig set. So I can pull it out, immediately go to it. I've got my full face mask here. I can pull it out, attach it, and go diving if I need to. I've got a couple extra uh, spare accessories. I've got a throw back here for not only surface water, I also use that as a tenon line. i got my save dive kit in there. I've got my fins. I've also even got a spare comm unit. Now this comm unit is for the surface personnel, whoever's tendering me, whether it's local law enforcement, another firefighter, or even another diver. I keep a spare comm unit for them as well. But everything is organized to where all they've got to do is throw the headset on, screw it into the unit, drop the unit into the water or the little uh, port into the water, and they're talking to me. So I keep everything nice, neat, and organized so that I can get to it in an emergency, in a quick deploy situation, and I don't have to go looking for anything. It makes it nice and neat, but more importantly, it takes good care of my equipment by doing this. And to be honest with you, this scuba gear is not just scuba gear. This scuba gear is life safety equipment. If you take good care of it, I promise you guys, it will take good care of you. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick little tour here. 
I hope the audio sounded pretty good guys we're still in quarantine mode here I've got kids and dogs running around um, so if the audio sucks in this video I'm truly sorry for that but I really want you to take away from this keep your gear in nice working order keep it organized because the more you take good care of it the more it will take good care of you. Guys, I want to talk about a live video we're going to be doing next week. We're going to be doing a live Q&A session, and we're actually going to be doing it with my camera lady, which is my wife. Say, hey, wifey. Hey, wifey. <laughs> So that was my wife, Heather, guys. You've seen her in some other videos, but we're gonna be doing a live Q&A. One of the things you guys may not know about her is she's a non-diver, she doesn't dive. And to be honest with you, she's the only family member I've got that doesn't dive. And I wanted to make a video because a couple of guys have asked, hey, how many people do you train that their spouse doesn't dive? And how do they go on trips with or without their spouses? So I thought there's no better example than this than me because my wife does go on a lot of trips with me and she doesn't dive. Does that mean she gets my truck keys and she can go driving around while I'm diving? Sure. Does that mean she's stuck at the hotel sometimes? Sure. Whatever it may be. But I wanted you guys to hear from her and not necessarily from me. So be thinking about the questions that you want to ask both me and her during our live Q&A. I will be posting on our Facebook, our Instagram, and even here on the storyboard for YouTube as well, a date and time of when it's going to be happening. But think about the questions that you want to ask her and me, and we'll try to answer them during that video as well. Guys, please keep them respectful. We're a Christian family, and I ask that just keep these questions respectful if I notice that we're getting too many bad questions out there obviously I'm just going to shut the video down so please keep it respectful you guys have done really great in the past we've done several Q&A videos and we even did a live Q&A as well and you guys did really great with that as well. But stay tuned for that coming up in the future. Guys, if you got any ideas or any questions about what to do when you can't dive during a quarantine like we're in, let me know down in the comment section below and I'll try to make a video for you. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this today's video. If you did, smash that thumbs up button for me and definitely share it as well. As always, guys, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.